We are the youth, the future bright and strong. In CC Graceville, where we belong. Our hearts are full of faith, our spirits soaring high. Together we will rise as God's light fills the sky. Our quitting point is God's starting point. Church, you're welcome to Christ Apostolic Church Graceville Assembly. We bless God for another time in His presence. We thank God for the gift of life. We thank God for bringing us all together again to study at His feet. It's another time for Bible study. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we bless you for this evening. We exalt your majesty for being a faithful father. We thank you for preservation of our lives. We thank you for being our shield and our buckler. We thank you for your word that you've, you've, you've prepared for us this evening. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, we invite you this evening to teach us. We request that you open your word to us. Only that which you want us to hear is what we will hear and is what we will speak. And at the end, all glory, honor, and adoration will be to your most holy name. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. In believing, amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for joining us. I want to believe you're with your pamphlet, you're with your Bible. Let's dive in into the study of today. By God's grace, we'll be looking at uh, study 24, and the topic is God test Abraham. So today, by God's grace, we'll, it's a build up on what we last what we learned last week, and uh, we saw the birth of uh, Isaac, and we saw how uh, Ishmael and his mother were sent out of Abraham's house. Now today, by God's grace, we'll see how God tested Abraham. And the topic says, God test Abraham. And today, by God's grace, we'll see how Abraham was able to, you know, 
overcome the test and he came out victorious after the test. I pray that for each and every one of us, for every test of faith that comes our way, the Lord himself will grant us the grace and capacity to come out in flying colors in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our text for today is Genesis chapter 22. So we'll be doing in and out of this book of Genesis chapter 22. Uh, but before we do that, let's look at the introduction. Genesis chapter 22 is a crucial moment for Abraham, demonstrating his strong faith as God tests his devotion. This test is closely tied to God's promise of numerous descendants for Abraham. The story encourages us to trust God completely and grasp the harmony between his promises and our obedience. It is a timeless illustration of discovering blessings in the midst of faith challenge. Praise God. Let's just pause it there. Can you imagine uh, the timeless illustration of discovering blessing in the midst of faith challenges? When challenge of faith comes our way, most of the time there are blessings embedded in the season. There are blessings embedded in that, you know, uh, so a uh, uh, wilderness period, so to say, there are blessings embedded herein. And today we will see how Father Abraham was able to trust God. So many lessons we will learn here today, but one of the lessons is the, 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 the need for us to be encouraged and to trust God completely and to you know give him 100% obedience when he gives instruction no matter how confused we are no matter how strange or where the instruction might be we must receive the grace of God to carry on obey the instruction to the latter and see God pump up come out with his blessing at the end of our obedience Abraham said first Faith prompts us to reflect on our own belief and genuine commitment to God. So for us to say we are, commit, we are committed to God, that means we must obey Him. Even when it's not pleasant, even when it's so difficult, we must obey Him. We must give our 100% obedience that shows genuine commitment to God. Studying this passage can provide valuable insight for our spiritual journey. Praise the Lord. Our Father helped Father Abraham. The Lord helped Father Abraham. He will also help you and I, even as we face our own uh, faith challenge in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's open our Bible to Genesis. I want us to just read a few verses. Let's read verse 1 to 5 for a start. Genesis chapter 22. I'll be reading from the NLT version of the Bible. Abraham's faith tested. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's feet. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a bond offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for a place God had told him about. Verse 4. On the third day of their journey, <clears throat> excuse me, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there and then we will come back. Verse 6. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, we have the fire and the wood. The boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. Abraham answered, and the boat walked on together. Let's just uh, pause it right there. So I, I, I'm sure we are very familiar with this story, but we just need to dive in a little bit to open up a little bit and get every lesson that we have embedded in this uh, story. Going into the discussion, the first question here, I mean, the first point here under the discussion is, 
why did god commanded it what did god commanded abraham to do what exactly was the command what exactly was the instruction given to abraham and we can find that in genesis chapter 22 verse 2 the instruction is very clear and god was very specific about what he wanted abraham to do god told abraham take your son your only son yes isaac so there is no maybe Ishmael or maybe not here. Your only son. Apparently it was only Isaac that God recognized as the son. And we can see the reason why Ishmael and the mother really needed to leave the house. So the only son recognized by God was Isaac. Take your son, your only son. Yes, in case you've forgotten, Isaac, yeah, whom you love. God was aware that he loved Isaac. And who was Isaac? This was a son Abraham and the wife gave back to them at a very old age. Abraham gave back to uh, Isaac when he was 100 years old and the wife was above 90. They were stricken old at the point they gave birth to this guy. And you can imagine the parent, of course, they would pour all their love on this boy. This is the boy God had promised them would give them the descendant that would be so numerous as a sea by, I mean, as a son the, by the seashore. And God is now saying, yes, that Isaac, whom you love so much, go take him to, a, to the land of Moria. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on the mountain which I will show you. This is serious. We can only imagine what was going on in the heart of Father Abraham. And it's amazing that Abraham responded immediately the next day. Let's imagine he had an encounter with God in his sleep or maybe in the night. And the next verse, the Bible said, the next morning, Abraham got up early. We need to give Father Abraham a clap right in there. Praise the Lord. There was no argument. There was nothing like, can I, can I think properly? Is it my mind that is trying to play games on me? Is it as a result of a movie I watched yesterday? Am I thinking too much? What is really happening here? There was no argument. The Bible never recorded that he rebuked the devil because I want to believe it was if it's... Even in my case now, I would probably think, am I hearing properly? This is a son I waited so much to, you know, uh, uh, finally hold to me. And God is saying, I want to use him as a bond offering. Was there any record of God using human as a bond offering? Abraham did not ask God any question. Abraham never asked any question. We'll get there later. Now, we can see the question God asked Abraham, and the question was clear. Take your son, the one you love so much, your only son, and God gave him the name, Isaac. Take him to XYZ town. I will show you where you will offer him to me as a burnt offering. And that was the instruction. Why was the instruction to sacrifice as Isaac devastating and perplexing? Of course, it was a very devastating uh, instruction. The Bible didn't give us the state of mind or whatever Abraham, whatever came to the mind of Abraham. But I'm very sure it was a devastating and perplexing situation. You know, and it was even a complex one. You are going to burn this boy. That means you will stay there, you will set him on fire, you kill him and burn him until it becomes ashes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now let's check verse 3. The next morning, Abraham got up, he saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for the burnt offering and set for the place God had told him. Praise God. And this makes it more confusing, right? He took two of his servants, took his son. At this point, I wonder what would be going on in his mind. And look at the distance of where they were to the place of sacrifice. They trek, I mean, they traveled, they journeyed for three solid days. Praise the Lord. But something is very paramount, and we must trust God for who he is. Praise the name of the Lord. Our God is good. Whatever it does is a good thing. It might not look like it, but it's a good God. Praise the Lord. We are referring to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 here. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. 
So in the midst of that confusion, in the midst of that very crazy and, you know, very, very devastating instruction from God to you, to me, he's still telling us today that he knows the plans he has for us. They are good plans. At the end of the day, is to give us a future and a hope. It's not for disaster. Humanly speaking, humanly from the human view, it's, you might think this is disaster coming. This is horror coming my way. But when God is involved, I can tell you this 100% that it's going to be joy at the end of the tunnel in the mighty name of Jesus. What does Abraham's prompt obedience reveal about his confidence in Yahweh? Praise the Lord. And this speaks to our lifestyle as well. We really need to have confidence in Yahweh that he knows what he's doing. And like I said, they gave him instruction. The next day, he picked his guys, the servants, his son, and the donkey, and they were on their way to the place, I mean, to the location to sacrifice the boy, as it were. So this speaks to us about the confidence he has in Yahweh. And let's check, he said, the next morning, he got up to the guys. When you look at verse 4, on the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He, he, he was so confident in Yahweh. And, and later on in the, in the New Testament, the Bible told us, told us that Abraham believed in his mind that even this boy that God is asking me to give, he can bring him back to life. So there was this conclusion in his mind that I know the kind of God I am dealing with. And is, this is the point we ought to get to as believers. The point where you know, I, I know who is behind me. I have somebody standing behind me. I have Yahweh on my side. He can't leave me. He said I should do this it looks crazy it looks out of the world it looks it looks it looks it's a confused you're in a confused state as it were but once the instruction is from god let's just go all the way trust in yahweh have a come which must have a confidence in yahweh solid that is there with us and at the end of the day it will be to the glory of his name he knows what he's doing but he knows what he's doing. Praise the Lord. Did Abraham notify Sarah about the divine instruction? Of course, the Bible never recorded that he notified Sarah. So the Bible said, I mean, the Bible was silent about Sarah. Obviously, Abraham was a worshiper. They must have been going to worship before this time. Because later on, we saw the question, very jamming question Isaac had him. Daddy, we have the knife, we have the burnt offering. Where is the sheep we're going to use for this sacrifice? So they must have been going before now. But at this time point, God, you know, uh, 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 had in conversation with him. And it was a very sensitive conversation. And I know that was the reason God had that discussion with Abraham. This is a man-to-man -man talk. You are the priest of the family. You are a worshiper yourself. You have a relationship. I can, I can relate with you at this point. So Sarah was not included. And I want to believe, you know, because of the sensitivity, because they asked us here, why was Sarah not uh, uh, informed? You know, the female aspect now, the feminine feel, the emotion feel, and then we don't know if they were relating on the same spiritual frequency. So the need why God just related with Abraham at, at this point. So Sarah was totally out of the picture, and I'm sure because they've been going to worship before now, she never, you know, uh, picked any offense in Abraham and the son and the servants traveling all the way for sacrifice. Another question here, why did God choose Mount Moriah? This journey, it took them three days before they got there. Obviously, so that we can really check, we can check the procedure that led to the result. I want to believe a lot of things will be going on in his mind. Am I going to kill my son for real? Is God so interested in my son that he will really, you know, uh, smell him as a sweet-smelling sacrifice? You know, so many things. A lot, you know, that three day was a lot, a lot. He had enough time to either back out and say, you know what? I'm not going to do this. It was a lot of time and he was certain, he was set in his mind. He had made up his mind that this instruction given to me, I will go all the way. I will obey him to the latter. Can Abraham's decision, can Abraham's decision not to bring servants to the mountain be related to spiritual sensitivity? And let's see, when they go to the location, uh, verse Verse 4 now, verse 5. Stay here with the donkey. 
that's a servant. Abraham told the servant, the boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there and then we will come back right back. Praise God. So this was a sport. They were, it was being spiritual. It was being sensitive spiritually. Likewise, you and I. So many loads and baggages we need to get off our way if we really want to obey God completely in any uh, instruction given to us. Let's check Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. I want to believe you're with your Bible right there. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such huge crowd of witness to the life of faith, let us strip off every width that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. For us to obey God 100%, for us to really run the race, for us to delight Him entirely, we must get rid of every weight around us. So these guys, you can imagine if the guys were with him at the point, he removed the knife trying to, you know, uh, uh, kill Isaac before the angel called his name. You can imagine what they could have done. So he was sensitive to say, you know what, you guys should stay here. Myself and the son, and my son, we have to travel a little bit further and come back. So we need to be sensitive as well to every weight around us, like sin. Things, little forces around us that may, you know, drag us down, that may make the instructions or the command of God coming to us, it, it, it will become difficult for us to obey 100% when we, 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 we try to mingle with those weights around us. We must get rid of them. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are to read verse 6 to 8. Let's see what we have in verse 6 to 8 now. Okay, verse 6. For the Lord... Okay, Genesis chapter 22. I beg your pardon. Genesis chapter 22, verse 6 to 8. Okay, it says, So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulder, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the bond offering? Verse 8, God will provide sheep for the bond offering, my son. Abram answered, and they both walked on together. So the question here, how did Abram demonstrate faith here? God told you, you are going to kill this son, the one you love so much. He never argued with God. But at a point when he was, he had the discussion with the son, because the son was curious. Daddy, we've been coming to worship. We normally go with a sheep. Where is the sheep? And he said, God will provide. Can you imagine such a faith in the face of a scary instruction? He was still depending on the God that God will provide. Meanwhile, God told him he was going to use a son, but he still believes God will provide. What comes out of your mouth when you are going through your own faith journey as well? When God is testing our faith, what do we say? Do we stay positive or we allow the enemy to, you know, pump in some negative thoughts around us? We must be focused. We must, you know, release our faith and speak the word of faith as well and demonstrate faith as well. Now we are asked to compare Abraham's obedience in faith in um, verses 8a with his action in verse 13. Any lesson for us today? Let's see what we we'll have in uh, 8a. 8a says, God will provide a sheep for the bond offering. And when you go down to verse 13, then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its own in tinket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a bond offering in place of his son. Praise the Lord. He was actually speaking, calling out the thing that was not existing as though it were. He was saying God will provide and God actually provided. Praise the Lord. We can see, you know, obedience, obedience, commitment, and the result came true for father abraham at this point and we really need to learn they said any lesson from for us today we must walk with god obey him to the latter demonstrate faith and see him come true for us let's believe whatever he says whatever he asks us to do let's do and trust him to come true for us and it will definitely come true in the name of jesus we are to read verse 10 to 12 
again and we've read that what does abraham's act of taking the knife signifies about his submission to god's will his submission to god's will was 100 percent so for me to say i love god i'm loyal to him i want to obey him i must submit totally to his will when it's not pleasant i mean when it's not pleasant when it's pleasant i must submit totally he took the knife and he was ready the bible tells us in the book of hebrew that he had killed the boy already he had killed the boy already before the sound came to call him so we must also show our act of uh, obedience by submitting our act of loyalty by submitting totally to the will of god the will of the master and just carry on with any instruction that comes away from him how does god's revelation in verse 12 show how our response to god's will reflect our submission and fear of god we've touched this already you know the way we respond to our challenge the way we respond to our trying moments is actually you know directly proportional to the level at which we are submitted, to the level at which we, we, we reference that God. The real you will bump out during the challenge. The real me will come out when that trial is ongoing. We need to trust God to be able to submit totally to him within this window. Why did Abraham name the place? Okay, let's read verse 13 to 14. Okay, then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its own in a tinker, so he took the ram and sacrificed it as a bond offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh, Yahweh Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Praise the Lord. Why did Abraham name the place? The Lord will provide. And how does it relate to our prayers? Praise God. And of course, the Lord provided. The Lord showed up for him. He said it. He believed God and God showed up for him. He believed this boy. Even if he asked me to slaughter him, I will slaughter him. He already promised me that I will be father of many nations. He has the capacity to bring him back to life. But for me, he gave it to me and he said I should bring it back to him. I will slaughter him. Abraham was 100% uh, 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 Abraham obeyed God totally, 100%. And when God showed up for him, he named the place. He named the place that here is the place on this mountain God can provide. Can you also say to yourself, no matter what is happening around you, God can provide. Once you are in line in sync with his instruction, he will provide. He will not leave you alone. You will not be put to shame. He will provide. He will show up for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And let's go to our conclusion. Our faith in God must undergo testing. Praise God. It's sweet to read, right? It's sweet to just discuss. However, at our own various journey with God, tests will come. What is your own Isaac? What is my own Isaac? When God is knocking, ask him for that Isaac. Will you be ready to let go? Will you be ready to, uh, to walk with him in order to pass that test? Now, from this conclusion, our faith in God must undergo testing. So let's buckle up and get set, trusting the Holy Spirit who is our anchor, our helper, to help us to come out from this test victoriously in the name of Jesus. This period of testing is when the strength of your faith, trust, and obedience to God is affirmed. You know, the period of test. When he's asking for that Isaac, when he's asking you and I to do that thing that is so difficult, when he's asking us to let go that thing we waited so long to get, when he's asking us to take some very difficult, humanly difficult decision, what is being tested at that point is your faith, my trust and obedience in God. And we are trusting the Holy Spirit to help us pass all of these tests of faith in the name of Jesus. Abraham, known as a father of faith, had left behind a legacy characterized by unwavering faith, complete obedience, trust, and submission to the will of God alone. 
Abraham successfully navigated his testing period. May the Lord help you and I to successfully navigate our own testing period in the name of Jesus. And we also pray for the grace to pass through our test in Jesus' name. Amen. We can see Father Abraham right here. From the start and to the point when the result of the test came out, he did so well. He passed his own test. Will you pass your own test today? Will I pass my own test today? The grace is available. Holy Spirit is available. It's the help we need to pass our own test. When our own test comes our way, we must trust him that is right there. Yahweh is right there with us. We are not alone. He gave the instruction. Is right there with us. He might not look like it, but is right there with us. We must trust him. We must have faith in him and we must obey him to the latter. Praise God. Let's go to the few prayer points we have in here. Let's thank the Lord for, uh, thank you Lord for your unwavering faithfulness and promise in all situations. Can you just lift up your voice and thank God for his unwavering faithfulness in every situation. I don't know the situation you are in now, but thank God for his unwavering faithfulness. God is faithful. He's right there with you in that storm. I appreciate him for his unwavering faithfulness even in the midst of the storm, in the midst of that situation. Yahweh is right there with with you can you just appreciate him for his faithfulness for his faithfulness for his faithfulness that he will bless your name for your faithfulness even in the midst of all these situations to you alone be all the glory in Jesus name we have prayed amen let's ask God to strengthen our faith and trust in his promise especially when faced with challenging and seemingly conflicting circumstances this evening can we receive strength from God Let's receive strength. Let's receive strength that our women we may have faith in him and trust him and trust his promise when we are passing through the challenges when we are walking through the valleys when we are going through the wilderness the grace to trust him we receive strength this evening in the name of Jesus let's ask for God's guidance and inner strength to surrender our will to his will in the area of your life why where obedience may be a struggle. I don't know where you are at the point where you are still struggling with God in terms of obedience. Can you receive strength this evening? Ask for inner strength to surrender your will. Not my will, Lord. Let your will be done in every area where I'm struggling with 100% obedience. This evening I receive grace. I receive inner strength to obey you 100% in the name of Jesus because you know that I know the plans you have for me. They are good plan, not of evil, to give me an expected end. The grace to obey you totally, to surrender totally, I receive in the name of Jesus. I will not struggle with you. I will not struggle with you. I will obey 100% in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say, Lord, grant me Lord, grant me the resilience and fortitude needed during time of testing and trial on my journey of faith. That day I received this evening, the resilience and fortitude needed during my testing period, during my testing time in the name of Jesus. The resilience and fortitude needed to look up to you alone, the author and the finisher of my faith in the name of Jesus. I receive the resilience not to back out in the name of Jesus. I will not back out in the name of Jesus, I receive the fortitude to keep my faith at you, to look up to you alone and alone. In the name of Jesus, together this evening, we receive the grace to be resilient, to be standing, to look up to you alone, that you will not put us to shame, and to walk through this testing moment and come out victoriously in the name of Jesus. And lastly, let's say, Lord, help me to undergo personal change and spiritual growth as I traverse both obstacles and victories in my spiritual journey. Father, help me to undergo personal change and spiritual growth as I traverse both obstacles and victory in my spiritual journey. I, I will not remain a baby. I receive the grace to grow, to grow, to traverse every obstacle even on my journey in the name of Jesus. Can we begin to appreciate the name of the Lord for this evening? Can you thank him for the grace released already unto you and to all our listeners all over the globe the grace we have received this evening to be resilient, to 
even in, in the face of the trial, to be resilient while we are going through our, our own faith journey. We thank you for the inner strength you've granted us this evening. To you alone be all the glory. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. We bless your name for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. A believing amen. Amen. Once again, we want to say a very big thank you to you for joining us this evening. And uh, we hope you were blessed. And we hope to see you next time, next week, same time, in the mighty name of Jesus. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Welcome to Christ Apostolic Church Graceville. We are delighted to have you join us today, especially if this is your first time. Please take a moment to fill out our first-timers form at welcome.cacgraceville.org. We also extend a warm welcome to our online audience. Thank you for joining us. This is CAC Graceville, a youth-focused church where your expectations become manifestations. We have a mandate to raise generals in all fields, and we are excited to have you as part of our growing family. Our church family meets in three venues, Lagos Church, every first Sunday of the month, Vantage Studio, 4 to 6 p.m., Fadei Bus Stop, Ikorodu Road, Yaba, Lagos, Abuja Church, every second Sunday of the month, 4 to 6 p.m., Jedediah Sound Studio, number 30, First Avenue, Efab City Estate, Life Camp Junction, Abuja, Digital Church, every last Sunday of the month, 4 to 6 p.m. across all social media platforms at CAC Graceville. Please join us with at least one family member at our next meeting. And don't miss our Bible study every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m., available online across all our social media platforms at CAC Graceville. We invite you to partake in our exciting Couch Fridays. These take place on the second and fourth Fridays of each month on Twitter Spaces at 7 p.m. If you need a listening ear or some advice, our set man is available every Thursday. You can book a slot at pourout.cacgraceville.org. If you're in need of prayers, please fill out our prayer request form at praywithme.cacgraceville.org. We believe in the power of collective prayer. You are our greatest publicity agent. E-flyers are available across all our social handles at CAC Graceville. Follow us and stay updated. Interested in joining any of our units? Fill out the volunteer form at volunteer.cacgraceville.org or meet any member of the meters and greeters team. If you'd like to join our church WhatsApp group, visit whatsapp.cacgraceville.org. Any additional announcements will be given by the pastor before the grace. For your tithes and offerings, please send to the church account, Naira account, UBA, 10250 USD account, UBA, 30036555512, account name Christ Apostolic Church, Graceville. For those with cash, kindly drop it in the offering basket being passed around. Don't forget to check our event calendar for upcoming church activities and events. Share your testimonies with us. Do you want to testify to the goodness of God? Please send your testimonies to TD at cacgraceville.org. This is CAC Graceville, our quitting point is God's starting point. In CAC Graceville where we belong. Our hearts are full of faith, our spirits soaring high. Together we will rise as God's light fills the sky. Our quitting point is God's starting point. It is power. We are anointed, raising generals in every field. With God's love, our strength revealed. Oh, CAC brings fill. to live in every step we plant a seed empowered by his grace we reach for more in every challenge we find an open door generals in faith in love in might we shine his light in the darkest night with courage See you
with God's own word, we take a stand. In every heart, His truth will reign. In CAC Graceville, His love remains. Our quitting point is God's starting point. In His power, we are anointed. Raising gentleness in every field. With God's love, our strength revealed. Oh, CAC Graceville, we Generals and faith in his arise With God's great vision we reach the skies Generals of faith in his name we claim Our quitting point is where God's glory came